Hey, Rob B here with Rob D, and you are listening to the Property Podcast. This week on the podcast, we're talking Lamborghinis, ego, billionaires, and delayed gratification. Yes, welcome to the Property Podcast, where every Thursday morning, property investors come to be informed and inspired. Today's episode is such an important one. You won't learn any particular tactics about how to get a great deal or how to run your portfolio more efficiently. But without being able to implement the ideas in this podcast, you won't get a chance to do any of that anyway. We're talking about delayed gratification. And as part of that, we're going to be sharing a few really powerful real life stories. But you'll just have to delay your desire for that by just a minute or two while we cover this week's news story. Rob, so much is going on in the world right now, and that is very much the case with property as well. Normally, we bring you one news story per week and then save them all up for the market updates. But actually, we're going to bring you two because we couldn't not report one of these stories because both are huge. The first of which is Boris Johnson's plans for a 95% mortgage scheme. Now, the Tory conference was in the last couple of weeks, and Boris Johnson seem to put property and home ownership right at the top of the agenda and coin the term i'll say it is his term you can reach me on social media if i'm wrong but generation buy is what we're going for so we've heard of generation rent but boris johnson wants to turn us into a generation buy rob what's the detail behind the headline <laughs> <laughs> oh you've set me up there um this will not be a long explanation and you will not be shocked to learn that there isn't any at this stage so it seems like this is like a rebadged help to buy mortgage guarantee from a few years ago so is they're going to incentivize lenders to make 95 percent mortgages available and somehow share the risk with them i don't know something like that because they've identified correctly that because of low interest rates mortgage payments are quite affordable but deposits are not and that's what's stopping a lot of people from buying their own homes at the moment that's all we know i'm sure there'll be more in the fullness of time but for now he's just kind of set out their stall and i think it's quite interesting because all politicians are aware that housing is a big issue it's something that people feel strongly about the labor party is focused more on renting and improving the renting experience and the conservatives were making noises about that when they're being pushed around by the labor party but now they've got a big majority they seem to be focusing more on solving it by bringing more people into home ownership. So hopefully a bit more detail around that will be available by the time we do our market update at the end of the month. In our second news story, the headline reads, house prices soar by 7.3% in September. And that's from Halifax. So it goes on to say, house prices soar by 7.3% in September, the steepest annual increase since June 2016, according to the latest index from Halifax, which is just a bit mad. Month to month, it's up by 1.6%. But remember, all of this is happening during a pandemic. So it's a bit bonkers that the market is so, so strong. Not many people would have predicted this. There's so much to unpack here. And of course, as we've said, we'll talk about this more in the market update in a few weeks' time. But it's really interesting. And some of you may remember that, Rob, you've said in the past that you've got to be careful with some of this data because it has bias to different regions. And Halifax tends to have a more northern bias. So the properties they lend on tend to be in the north. So that could be adjusted. But nationwide lends more in the south. So the property market in the south is a little bit softer. But still, nationwide figures for September were up 5%. So... It's whatever one you take, it's still really, really strong. Five or seven percent. Take your pick. Both are really, really big numbers. So plenty to unpack in the market update in a few weeks' time. It's going to be a cracker. Don't miss that one. In the 1970s, there was a psychologist called Walter Mischel who conducted what's become a classic experiment. He got some children into his lab one by one and offered them a choice. They could either eat a marshmallow right now Or they could wait a brief period of time, and if they managed to wait, then they'd get two of them. He then left the room, and cameras recorded what the children did. If you've ever encountered a child, you won't be surprised to learn that most of them just ate the marshmallow straight away. But some of them were able to wait and get the reward of two marshmallows a little bit later. Now, some guy tormenting children in his lab wouldn't be that interesting in itself, but what made this experiment a classic is that he tracked the achievements of these children over a number of years. And he found that those who were able to delay gratification at a young age performed better academically, had higher test scores, and even had fewer behavioural problems later in life. 
So the children in this experiment were showing the ability to delay gratification. They were able to say no to something they wanted now in order to get something better in the future. And we want to talk about delayed gratification today because when you think about it, it's actually essential to investing. It involves having money today and not spending it so your life can be better in the future. And delayed gratification is not just something that children struggle with. Everyone struggles to delay gratification to some extent. So in this episode, we're going to give you some real life examples of why it can be so damaging not to and share some of our thoughts about how you can do it more successfully. So let's start with two real life stories. We're not making this up to get the point home. We know these people we're about to describe. Of course, we're not going to use real names, but they are real stories. The first story is of a couple I know, who've always liked the nice things in life. And as soon as they've had money, they've spent it. Whenever they came across a bit of funds, it was business class trips for the whole family around the world. It was the flashiest cars on the driveway. And to those looking from the outside, people may have thought these people were incredibly well off, but they weren't. They just spent every single penny that they had. The flashy car on the driveway sometimes had to stay there because they couldn't afford to put the diesel in it to fill it up. And we're not talking about a 20, 30, 40 grand car here. We're talking about an £80,000 car sitting on the driveway, but they couldn't put the £50 in to get it moving. But unfortunately, the story gets worse because this then moved into a property story. This couple sold their family home took the deposit money and were going to buy their next home. But they couldn't find the one they wanted there and then. So they rented and carried on renting. And their lifestyle, again from the outside, was looking very impressive. But lo and behold, within a few short years, that deposit money had completely been wiped out. And now they are saving up or trying to save up again to get back on the property ladder. A clear example of people who could not delay gratification. Now let's hear the opposite, the story of someone who was able to delay gratification. And I don't have a lot of detail around this story. It's nowhere near as emotive, but I've chosen to share it because it dropped into my inbox literally this morning. I saw it just before we started recording, and I'm sure the person who sent it to me doesn't realise quite how unusual this story is. He said that he started his business about eight years ago. It was a real slog. It just seemed to be getting harder and harder. But today, he just had an offer accepted on his 10th buy-to-let property. And the income from those properties, once they're let, will cover his expenses in full. And he mentions in his email that he's telling me because he doesn't know who else to tell. He doesn't want to mention it to his friends because most of them aren't in that position. If you told them, they either wouldn't get it or it would seem like he was showing off. So it's a really incredible achievement. In eight years, he's reached the position where he's what people would call financially independent. All his living expenses are covered by property, while the couple in Rob's story have probably been working just as hard, but have gone backwards during that time. So what's the difference between these two people? Why is one able to completely transform his life over a relatively short number of years, whereas the other seemingly can't think beyond the end of today? Well, it's because it's hard. It's actually hard to wait. That first story may sound extreme, but most people in this country, operate that way. We operate for the now. We want it here. We want it faster. We want it quicker. So many people are not prepared to wait the long term because that's a bit more dull. That's not as fun. So it's far easier to fall into the instant gratification way of living rather than the delayed gratification way of living. Even though the delayed gratification doesn't have to be delayed for that long, as we've just heard, and can then give you endless amounts of happiness beyond that point. But so few will still do it. And like I said, that's because it's hard to wait, and it's easy to take the option of the now. Look at social media. You know, Social media is full of people showing the absolute best versions, and sometimes not even true versions, of their lives. And that's on social media, is what most of us will be absorbing. So the couple I've referenced. On social media, their lifestyle probably looks absolutely incredible. But behind the scenes, we know very different. And Rob, I think this is all led by the ego. Now, when the term ego is used, people wrongly will often go ego arrogant. You know, if someone's got an ego, then they're arrogant. But we all have an ego. Every single one of us has one. It's just how in control of our own egos are we and how aware that we actually have one. And it means that we 
sometimes we'll end up feeling that we need to compete in different ways in different levels and show our importance and our status of what we've achieved this may only play out in subtle ways with some of us but it's there with every single one of us even if you don't act on it sometimes there's an eternal little trigger that'll go off and go well why can't i do that or i can afford that car well if only they knew or why don't i show them it's there and it may not be present all the time but it is there Your ego is your enemy. There's a book called that. But your ego is your enemy if you're looking for delayed gratification. Because your ego will be telling you, spend it now, show them, prove them wrong. And it doesn't just play out with money with your ego. It plays out in many ways. But unfortunately, your ego can cost you a lot of money. That's exactly right. And the problem is... Delaying gratification, saving instead of spending, doesn't look good to other people. When you get there and you're able to spend all day Instagramming from the golf course when everyone else is at work, maybe that looks good. But that's years in the future. As I mentioned in the guy's story that I shared a little earlier, his friends aren't doing any of this. They don't really understand it. They're not going to be impressed by the kind of things that he's talking about. And they're particularly not going to be impressed in the early days when it's really hard and you're not really having any success that you could show off. And I do think social media is particularly pernicious in this respect because, like you said, Rob, people are showing off the best version of themselves, not necessarily even a true version of themselves. And as humans, there is a very strong desire to fit in and do what everyone else is doing. So if everyone else has got the nice car, not only do you feel like a bit of a loser for not having one, you also think, well, everyone else has. So clearly this is normal. Everyone else can afford this. Everyone else is making this choice. So I should as well. And that is really damaging. So I think the first thing that you can do to improve your ability to delay gratification is to be more secure in yourself, to not care so much about what other people think. And it's one thing to say it, it's quite another to do it. There's not like three quick and easy steps we can give you to be more secure in yourself. So maybe that's not very actionable advice, Rob, but I do think it's true. Yeah, this might start to sound like a therapy session, but I think the first step is awareness, like awareness of this. But I joke, but it's so true. And look, the examples are around you every day. Warren Buffett, Bill Gates, Mark Zuckerberg, billionaires. Have you ever seen them at any point in their careers showing off their wealth? No, because they're more interested in their goal, what they're working on and what they're doing than proving to people that they're worthy, that they should be worshipped. Now, you could go, well, you know, people worship them because they're billionaires, but they weren't always billionaires. None of them started out as billionaires. None of them started out as millionaires. They've all got to that point, but through no point in their journey have they gone on that massive ego trip where they suddenly feel that they need to show you how well they've done for validation. And I think social media is really interesting. Look at all the people who are showing off money, standing in front of cars or big houses. What are they trying to do? Are they trying to prove it to you or to themselves? I question that. I actually think that the people on social media, the large majority of the people who do this on social media, either don't actually have the money or are massively insecure that they need that validation. They need to stand in front of the supercar to get the likes, to make them feel like, oh, I feel more secure now because people are validating me. You know, don't feel jealous of those people. Feel sorry for them in a nice way. You know, they're probably not quite happy with themselves and they need your validation to feel better about their own circumstances. It's those quietly beavering away in the background who aren't throwing it in your face that are getting the results. Like the story that Rob told at the beginning of the guy who's quietly built his wealth. Like the billionaires I've referenced who on their journey didn't stop to show off, just carried on with their mission because they were probably secure. They probably didn't feel the need to show you their best version of themselves because they were happy with their version of them. And I think if you're happy with you and you don't need people to applaud you and you don't need people to tell you you're wonderful and therefore you don't go chasing it, then you can delay gratification. It is so hard to do, Rob. I completely agree. It's not suddenly right, oh, now you're aware you can do it. But I think by being aware of what's happening around you, you can start to make choices. And your ego might pop up and go, let's go for the top spec car. Or let's not put that money away this month and buy a new wardrobe of clothes. But if you recognise that that's your ego talking and you can go and pick up a few items of clothes from a cheaper shop and really does it matter as long as it fits and looks okay rather than a designer store or that your car will get you from A to B and it doesn't really matter if it's got all the optional extras or not. If you can catch your ego having those conversations with yourself then at least you can make a choice. But until you start catching yourself 
You can't make those choices. No, and catching it is difficult, but it is possible. And he said that awareness is the first step, and I think that's spot on. There's a theory, and I can't remember who it's by or what it's called, that everything is social signaling. Because of the way humans have evolved, every single thing you do is ultimately, whether you're aware of it or not, to signal something to other people. And normally that's a status relationship of some kind. And since I read about that theory, I've actually caught myself sometimes, not doing things like showing off my Lambo on Instagram. I tend to keep that private, but trying to... <laughs> But, you send them to me, Rob. <laughs> exactly, yeah. But <laughs> but just other little things like, oh, why did I suddenly want to mention that? Or why do I want so-and-so to know this about me? You just start noticing little things and questioning why you're doing it. And even if you don't think of yourself as an ego-driven person, there's always going to be an ego at work and there's always going to be some social signalling going on. I love this because we've not really talked about this before the podcast, but I do exactly the same thing. I find myself <laughs> in a conversation like... Why do you really want to tell the person that thing? Mm. Like, I've caught myself and going, why are you about to do that? Like, and it's my ego just wants to mention something. And now you might be listening to this going, Rob, Rob, wow, how egotistic are they? But we all do it. We're like, we want to mention how our kids performing well at this thing because you brought a subject up or how you've done well in that area even if it's just something subtle but if you start to catch it i mean you start to have loads of conversations in your head but at least you're catching it and you start really questioning yourself going wow it's amazing how much your ego impacts day to day and as i said before and you've rightly pointed out rob every single one of us has one even if your ego is to show off that you are anti-wealth and anti-flashy and you go completely the opposite way. That's still, in a way, your ego playing out. We're getting a bit deep now. Definitely. But I think what you just said is actually a little bit of a hack there. Being aware of your ego and catching yourself is really important. But you could also change who it is that you're trying to impress. So a car is an obvious status symbol. And in the story you shared, you're talking about the couple who always had the latest flashy cars. So online, there are lots of communities around financial independence and budgeting and things like that, where having the cheapest car, the worst car is actually a status symbol, or having no car at all is a status symbol. It's still trying to show off if someone's bragging about how many hundred thousand miles their car's got on it, and it's still just about working and how cheap it is because they haven't bought a car for 20 years. That's still showing off, but it's doing it to a different group of people. So I'm not suggesting you necessarily just go to the opposite extreme, but it's worth thinking about who it is you're trying to impress. And in turn, who you are impressed by, because normally they're quite interlinked. The people who you respect and envy, you want them to respect and envy you. So the people who are always on glamorous holidays or have got the latest car, do they really have a lifestyle that you aspire to? I know it, maybe it looks like they do, but do they really beneath the surface? Or, or maybe a better question is, will they in 20 years time? They do at age 30, but will you want their life age 50 or 60 or 70? When they're terrified of losing their job because they've got nothing in the bank, would you still envy them at that point? Or would you rather have made different choices 10, 20, 30 years earlier and be in a position where you've built up assets, you've created wealth, and you're in a position where you've got freedom and choice in your life? Definitely. And I think it's worth saying, don't feel bad about having an ego. As we said, we all have one. So the fact that you sometimes want to impress people doesn't make you a bad person. But when you understand your ego, you can then start to question it from a financial point of view and from a delayed gratification point of view. And you can go, do I really need this or is my ego overpowering me? And then you can start to make better decisions. But if you struggle with that concept and you think, well, I'm never going to be able to get over that, or that sounds really hard, there is a different way of trying to tackle this. And of course, you can do both. But the different way is looking to the long term and having a very important vision for where you want to be in the future. So if you say, well, I want to delay gratification because I want to retire when I'm 50, probably isn't enough because when the shiny, new, exciting thing is here in the present and that retiring at 50 sounds a bit dull, albeit nice, the shiny, exciting thing right now is going to win. But if you can really develop in your mind what it will mean to you at the age of 50 to be able to retire, how it will impact you, your family, your freedom, what that will mean to your loved ones because the amount of time you'll be able to spend with them, the impact on the world that you can have in different ways or the enjoyment that you'll be able to take out of life by having all that freedom, whatever it may be for you, really develop that in your mind. So you've got a strong competing force with the instant gratification desires now. If you have that strong competing force that can override and win against the now, then you've got more chance of making better decisions. 
So I've really enjoyed this conversation. It's one of the reasons I love doing the podcast. We just get to have a chat. But let's try to round up some of the ideas that we talked about. So I'm sure you were sold on this before we even started, but hopefully you now understand at an even deeper level now why delaying gratification is so important. Would you rather be the person who now has all his expenses covered from property investment? Or would you rather be the person wondering if he can afford to fill his car up? There's no particular advantage that one person had or there's no hard luck story that the other suffered from. It's just the ability to make choices over a different time frame. So how do you do that if you struggle? Be aware of when you're making short-term decisions around spending to impress other people and be aware of who you're trying to impress. Maybe it looks like they've got the life that you want, but do they really when you see the unfiltered version? And will they in the future? And really importantly, We talk about this a lot. Goals, but not just goals, a really strong vision of the future. As we've heard, everyone struggles with this to some extent. And really to consistently delay gratification, your future vision, what you're going to be able to do and have and be in the future, that vision needs to be more compelling than whatever it is you could have today. That needs to always win when you're faced with a decision. Otherwise, you are sometimes probably more than you'd like, going to find yourself making decisions for the short term. And when you do that, it will cost you. Maybe each instance won't cost you that much, but when you add it up and when it compounds over years and years, the difference in the path that it will take you on will be enormous. So it's time for our listener success story, where you let us know how you've been getting on. And we love it because you normally accompany it with some nice words or a five-star review, but you don't have to. But if you do leave a review, we are obviously very, very grateful so rob like most weeks our listeners are smashing it who are we showcasing this week this week got a lovely comment on instagram from dyson developments he said after retiring from my day job during which time i built up a reasonable buy to let portfolio i needed to do something else so i found property hub refocused my efforts and now i buy old property and transform them by leveraging my assets i absolutely love what i now do and i'm more motivated than ever Unsure, but if I was a betting man, I'd have to guess that probably none of his or her friends have the slightest clue about how well they've done. But thank you for telling us. It's really great to hear that you're not just having so much success with property, but getting so much satisfaction from it as well. It's time for Hub Extra now, the part of the show where we give you that little bit more. And remember, this is backed up with our weekly email that goes out every Friday to everyone who's part of Property Hub. And this week, we're giving you a quote. Because it's that kind of episode. I think a quote is really useful here. Yep, this quote's from Abraham Lincoln. And the quote is, Discipline is choosing between what you want now and what you want most. I think that just perfectly sums up in a few words what we spent quite a few minutes rambling about earlier. It's this idea of the future vision. Once you've got a vision of what investing can do for you or what being a business owner can do for you or whatever it is, once that vision is compelling enough and you want it enough, that is what you want most then it will be easier for you to make choices that favour that over what it is that you want right now. That's still a choice that you're going to keep on having to make day after day after day. And it's that discipline that underlies every successful person. So I love this quote. Very simple, very powerful, and one that you might want to keep in mind. So that's us done for another week. We'll be back on Tuesday with Ask Rob and Rob. And of course, we'll be back on Thursday for the Property Podcast. But until then, have fun, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.